I'm working on a bunch of old game consoles like this TurboGrafx-16, as well as NES, Sega Master System, Atari 2600, ColecoVision, Super NES. In some cases I'm repairing them, and in other cases like TurboGrafx-16, I'm working on some projects with RGB to HDMI, as well as composite video to HDMI, using the RetroScaler to take various video sources and send it out over HDMI. So to help with any video and audio experimenting, I made a video and audio buffer PCB with today's sponsor, PCBWay. For the video, I'm using a Texas Instruments THS7316 3-channel video amplifier with a filter and 6 dB gain. So it will output double the voltage that it sees on the input. There's a simplified application example where you take video signals in, have a 75 ohm terminating resistor to ground, it gets filtered, buffered, amplified, and sent back out with 75 ohm series resistors. And in my schematic for this PCB, it's based on one of their reference designs in the datasheet. I have headers so I can plug the input and output into a breadboard, onboard 75 ohm termination, and I have the option here for AC coupling capacitors. If I want DC coupling, I can just put zero ohm jumpers, and there's optional footprints for pull up or pull down resistors. So whether you're doing AC or DC coupling, and whether the video signals have sync on them or not, throughout the datasheet there's information on different ways to configure all of this. I also have just a standard inverting unity gain op-amp buffer for left and right stereo audio in case I want to use those. And if I wanted to change the gain, I could just change the resistors here. So this lets me provide some isolation between whatever game system I'm hooking up and to the retro scaler because not only is it convenient when prototyping to have some sort of isolation and if I'm working with a faulty unit I don't want it to accidentally send a weird higher voltage out that the retro scaler can't cope with. I'd rather break a board that I know how to fix. But aside from that, if I'm doing any actual circuit experiments, for example here we have separate red, green, and blue video signals and a separate sync signal. So if I want to try hooking it up here to RGB with sync combined on green, I'm going to have to combine sync and green here. So then I've changed the impedance of the video signal and I just want to be able to rebuffer it and generate a fresh 75 ohm video signal. So for my purpose right now, I'm working with composite video which has sync on it. So based on the data sheet information for the chip, I am using 75 ohm termination and AC coupling capacitors. And the chip has a sync tip clamp feature to do DC restore after you AC couple the signal. The reason we want this to have a 6 dB gain or double the amplitude of the incoming signal. An output video signal is going to have a series 75 ohm resistance coming in here from the game system in this case. Then when that video signal sees another 75 ohm termination to ground, you have a voltage divider with two equal resistors. So the game system may send out peak to peak two volts of video. By the time it's entering the chip, it's down to one volt peak to peak. So that's why we double it again to 2 volts peak to peak, send it out again, filtered and cleaned up, and again we have a 75 ohm series resistance. Then when we plug that into the other video input, that's going to have 75 ohms to ground. So then again the final amplitude of the video signal will be back down to the expected 1 volt peak to peak, which is the proper voltage range of a composite video signal. Using the NES as a composite video source, I have this nest of cables here. All that's really happening, there's the yellow video cable going into the NES. It comes out and goes into this Y adapter, two jacks, 
to one plug. So right now nothing's plugged in, but on the other jack, so basically connecting the yellow plug over to this red cable, it comes over here and I have a scope probe on just so I can tap into the video signals. But the goal will be to plug the NES video into this retroscaler for a proper terminated connection. So on the retroscaler video input with no power on, I'm just verifying a 75 ohm to ground terminator, and it's the same on the other RGB or component inputs. This can take composite or component or RGB with sync on green. So these are all 75 ohm terminated to ground. So still with nothing plugged in to here, I'm going to power this up so that it's on standby. And with just an open-ended cable going to the scope probe, I want to look at the oscilloscope. So I'm powering on the NES and I'm triggering on NTSC video line 200, just arbitrarily looking around, 500 millivolts per division. And it's telling me 2.3 to 2.4 volts peak to peak. And that's about twice the amplitude of a composite signal, which should be maybe 0.7 volts or so for the actual video part, plus another 300 millivolts for the sink below it. So maybe around one volt or so peak to peak overall. So 2.4 peak to peak, if I zoom in, looks like we have horizontal sink, color burst, and then video brightness and color information and such. If I plug the video into the terminated retroscaler and readjust to trigger again, and I'm going to change the vertical scale, 200 millivolts per division. Now the peak to peak is 1.1 volts, which is more what we would expect for the video signal now that it's terminated with 75 ohms to ground. This is the sort of voltage levels and signal information I'd be looking for. Now I have the TurboGrafx-16 and I took off the cover on the back to get at the expansion port with that big three row header. So I have five volts and ground available to power this video and audio buffer board. And there's stereo left and right audio coming here for the op amps. Then I have another ground over on the video side and composite video. Right now it's not going through this video buffer. It's just extra pins on the breadboard going to the yellow video cable. And that cable right now is just basically going to the scope probe over here. This Y adapter currently is not plugged in. So I'm starting out probing the video signal here open circuit, not terminated. On this breadboard, it's just some extra wires plugged in because we also have access to discrete RGB as well as sync. So I'm gonna be later doing experiments with that. And that's another advantage to having this buffer board. I can use resistors, capacitors, and I may try to do something like combine sync on the green. So using a buffer may come in handy for something like that. So if I turn this on and go to the scope, in this case, the video signal is not referenced at ground, it's biased up. So I'm going to have to scale this. Right now I'm at 500 millivolts per division, and now I'm triggering on the video. So there's a sync pulse, color burst, and video detail. So just pausing the display with the video cable not plugged into anything else, Peak to peak right now is 1.4 volts. It also depends on exactly what kind of color and brightness information is currently on screen. Right now it's only 740 millivolts peak to peak because these levels here are relatively low. Now we're at 1.3 peak to peak. But basically what I'm looking to see is now when I plug this into the retro scaler so it's terminated, it's a lower level signal. Right now it's 940 peak to peak. I'll bring the scale larger and shift this down. So we're 
mostly around 920 millivolts peak to peak right now with this particular video information we're seeing. So now I want to actually put this video signal through a video buffer. Of course, not using proper cabling, but just for test purposes. Turbo Graphics Video Now is coming to the input of this buffer, which has a 75 ohm termination to ground. Then we're going through the buffer with 6 dB gain, and right now no video plugged in anywhere, so it's open circuit. And we should see 6 dB gain between bottom trace and top trace. So right now the bottom green trace is straight out of the turbo graphics going to the input of the video buffer. The blue top trace is the output of the video buffer. So both of these traces are at 500 millivolts per division. The bottom trace, which is the terminated video going at the input of the buffer, I will try to pause when we have a high level on the video signal. So right now, Terminated video coming out of Turbo Graphics. Peak to peak is 760 millivolts in this case. Then the output of the buffer, 1.32 volts peak to peak because we're doing 6 dB gain, doubling the signal. Now I'll let it run again and I'll plug it into the retro scaler to terminate the top signal. Now both traces should be the same because they're both terminated. So if I just pause anywhere, we have 900 millivolts peak to peak going into the buffer, 860 millivolts peak to peak coming out. So of course, it's not going to be exactly double, especially with this wiring setup, but I'll try to scale these and overlap. So there it is. If I switch which channel is active, they're basically overwriting each other. So the buffer is doing its job. Now if I scale them back down, at 500 millivolts per division, the input to the buffer coming out of Turbo Graphics, right now it looks like it starts at one volt biased up from ground. And the output of the buffer going through the DC block capacitor, we're basically centered around ground. So this is one of the things I was looking to take advantage of as well with having a buffer circuit. In case I'm going to hook up another system that actually has some damage, Maybe there's a weird extreme DC offset getting to the video output. It could be like 15 volts. I don't want to risk easily damaging something like this if it's not designed to handle such cases. So putting the buffer in line gives a little extra isolation between a device under test and the target I'm plugging it into. And when I get around to experimenting with these other video signals, and I start needing to add in more passive components, I will benefit from having a buffer anyway to regenerate a proper 75 ohm output video signal. And now I connected the output of one of the audio channels to this jack to go to the orange amplifier so we can hear that sound is passing through the op amp audio buffer and we can look at it on the scope. So. I'll turn everything on. Of course, I'm probably picking up all kinds of noise with this, but it's working. So if I try to capture a still image, so being an inverting Unity gain buffer, the green trace is the incoming audio coming straight out of the turbo graphics. The blue trace is the output of the op amp buffer and it does look to be an inverted one-to-one -one copy of the incoming audio. We're on the same vertical scale, and the op-amp output looks actually as if it cleaned up a bunch of the noise on the original incoming signal, so that's good. I'll try to zoom in and capture some more, so we can see there's a lot more fuzzy activity on the green trace going into the op-amp, and the blue trace is a lot cleaner. So now, I need to try to move all of this over to the television area. Everything looks fine, whether I'm using the buffer or just going straight from Turbo Graphics out to an RCA video cable and into the retro scaler. So now, whether I just want to play these old game systems 
using the RetroScaler to go to HDMI, or if I'm testing or repairing these old systems, or working on new projects like trying to do RGB mods to not have to use composite, the video audio buffer is going to come in handy.